Hi there! I'm Jen, this is Remembered Reads, and this is going to be the questions answered part of my Q&A for 1,000 subscribers. Alright, this is future me, and as I was editing this, I realized that it's gonna have to be two parts. So, the part where I say this is the Q&A, this is part one of the Q&A. Here we go. The winner of the giveaway draw for The Wizard of the Pigeons was Rhea from the Book Finch. I used the random number generator online to pull a number out and numbered everybody's questions and figured if it was somebody who was asking not to be in it, I'd just go for the number below them. And she was the winner, so hopefully, Rhea, you will enjoy the book. If not, at least it was free. <laughs> All right, let's answer some questions. The Lawn Gnome asked, when the day comes that you decide to stop making videos, what is the legacy you hope to leave behind? What I look forward to leaving behind is the videos themselves, just because I have such great fun every now and then finding channels that are dormant where they haven't deleted their content but they haven't made anything for months or even years. And I think it's, it's a lot of fun to look into that kind of moment where someone was sharing and then stopped. So yeah, the videos themselves. Ambie Crafts Reads asked a whole slew of questions, so we'll go through those. You author you refuse to even try. I don't really have any, although, I mean, knowing that Marion Zimmer Bradley was a pedophile does make me stay away from her books somewhat now, because, but author you'll never read again, and never say never. I've read a few books that I hated because book clubs made me read them. I talk a lot about having read Dan Brown's Angels and Demons for a book club. What was it? The last name is Sterling. I forget what the initials are, but the Dies the Fire series. I had to read that for a book club and hated it. So I don't plan to read more of those authors, but I mean, I would if uh, because I had so much fun complaining about them. So yeah. Four is favorite genre, and I don't have a favorite genre. I read a bit of everything. Five is least favorite genre, but again, I don't really have a least favorite genre because I don't avoid anything. What is your Hogwarts house? And I think I did the Pottermore quiz and it said Slytherin, but I don't have a pet snake or anything, so how, how, how right can that be? I don't know. I do have a cousin who has a pet snake. Which characters represent your family members? I don't know. Again, I'm not a super huge character person. Man, I will say, I think th these both will sound insulting and I don't mean it that way. The, uh, the non-sleazy aspects of the main character in Orphan Pomek's Museum of Innocence remind me a lot of my mother's youngest brother, who's about the same age, and a lot of the generational and culture shift stuff, and the car, the, the Chevrolet that he's driving that he keeps, that's from the 50s, and the book is set in the 70s and 80s, and he still has that car, and my uncle still has the same car. <laughs> so uh, that reminds me of a family member, and I remember when I read Jonathan Frazen's The Corrections, it reminded me of a different uncle, the husband of one of my mother's sisters, um, who's American and just, I don't know, it reminded me of his family, a lot of the characters in that, which again, I don't think is necessarily positive because neither of those had particularly good characters. So I don't mean it in, you know, <laughs> in a sleazy way, but yeah. Ah, maybe I shouldn't have answered that. <laughs> If you could live in any book world, what would it be and why? That implies, you know, something that's not in a realistic setting. And because so much of the fantasy and science fiction that I read is of the grimdark or military variety, it's all negative, so I'm not the person that you want to have answer that question. Okay, that's the end of her questions. What page are you on asked, is there any book you've read that you think could have been done better in another author's hands? And if so, what was the book and what author would you have tried to revise it? I actually have an option for this that was sort of revised by a different author. So about 15 or so years ago when I was on this real South African kick, I read a book by Dan Slay, which is called uh, Islanda, or Islands. It's written in Afrikaans, but it's in a very old-fashioned style, which is more like Dutch, so I find that easier to read. So I was reading it. It's an 800 and something page book. It's massive. And it's about characters in the early days of the Dutch Cape Colony, and specifically about this Danish man who was married to a Khoisan woman and then their kids, grandkids, etc. It was theoretically interesting stuff, but it was written in a really boring way. And it covered some of the similar material to some of the stuff that Andre Brink has written. And Andre Brink was actually the person who translated that book into English. And the English version is a much more fun read. Now, I mean, it's obviously an easier read because it's in English. and. <laughs> 
<laughs> which is a language that I actually speak, um, as opposed to being a language that's sort of related to the language that I speak. But beyond that, I just thought it was more engaging, so he did rewrite that book and it was better. <laughs> Troy Tal said, what was your number one childhood book? And when I was a really young kid, I was a big fan of the Martine series. These are picture books. They're, you know, very pretty drawings about the adventures of this young girl. This is the cooking one. And uh, When I was a bit older, probably Robert C. O'Brien's Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim which is the book that the movie The Secret of Nim is based on, but The Secret of Nim is more of a fantasy story, whereas Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim is more of science fiction. And I think, and also plays with a lot of interesting ideas at a level that kind of middle grade kids can understand. And I think that was very formative in what I look for in other books later. Graham Quigley asks, if you could get the chance to have a conversation with one author, living or dead, who would it be? Well, if I could talk to a dead author, I would probably ask Kay Selodiker if The Hidden Star was really the final edit, because that was published posthumously, and I've always wondered if he would have written that differently if he could have. Stephanie Nix asks, what hobbies other than reading do you enjoy? And I enjoy hiking, rock climbing, general outdoorsy stuff, uh, and especially when I can do them with my dog. Gaming, drinking coffee, and going to the gym, but I often read at the gym, so that's kind of combined. And volunteering with animal and library groups, that's always fun too. Beautifully bookish Beth, I can't say her name. Beautifully bookish, okay. Beautifully bookish Bethany asked, what book or books turned you into a reader? And I've basically always been a reader. My family has always had books around. I actually don't remember a time before I could read or before I read. I think I'm very lucky that way, but it also means I don't have a good answer to this because I've just always read. Although I think a lot of people say, what turned you into a reader of, you know, non-children's books? And that was Tom Clancy, who I started reading when I was 12, which I know is weird, but I was a weird kid and yeah, so maybe, I don't know. Bookie Charm asks, if you were a color, what color would you be and why? And I would be gray because gray sounds depressing because you can give a gray day, but no, gray is pleasant. Gray makes the weather more neutral. Gray is wonderful. So gray, I'm even wearing gray. Big Hard Books and Classics asks, what was your undergrad major? And in retrospect, would you change that? Yes, I would. Uh, I majored in linguistics and minored in computer science. I probably should have done the reverse. Linguistics is interesting and I was on the technical linguistics side, which is more mathy than I think a lot of people think about sociolinguistics, which is very much more kind of humanities focused as opposed to math-ish. And I think the negative part of of having studied linguistics is that I think about language in a much more conscious way and which I think is not always natural because it means I often stop and think what accent should I use for this and is it going to sound artificial and what is the social ramifications of if I do this with an exaggerated accent versus whether I do it with you know the obvious this other accent because I mean, obviously we all have accents all the time yeah I wouldn't do that again. Um, My Reading Life asked, is there a Canadian author that you wish all non-Canadians would read? And my answer is basically no, because I, I'm really hesitant to give blanket recommendations. Although, I mean, I suppose everybody should read David Suzuki's warnings about climate change, which he's been writing for 40 years or something. So I, I suppose that's important. But in terms of reading literature, um, it really depends what somebody's interests are. I always think, for example, that it's a shame when people have read The English Patient, which is, you know, the European set book that is the sequel to the Toronto set In the Skin of a Lion. So I wish they'd read In the Skin of a Lion, especially if they liked that, The English Patient, since it has a bunch of the same characters. But it just really depends. I, I think there are a lot of authors that I would recommend if you like British or American author X, I think you would like Canadian author Y but I feel like that's a whole conversation because there would be so many elements that would feed into what my answer to that would be. Books I'm Not Reading says, you seem so mellow in your videos. Have you always been that way? No, I have kind of a weird personality in that I'm very mellow and then I just have brief explosive moments and then I go back to being mellow. I'm kind of a weirdo that way. <laughs> but yes, I have always been that way, pretty much.
Book Cave says, what book do you most want to reread? And the book that I reread every year basically is All Quiet on the Western Front. But So that's a boring default answer, but I recently bought a one dollar used copy of Orhan Pamuk's Istanbul City of Memories, and I read this a number of years ago. Now I have my own copy, so I'm planning to reread this soon. Anna asks, where do you read and what is your favorite place to read? Uh, I read primarily on transit and at the gym and occasionally at coffee shops. I'm not somebody who reads in a warm, comfy chair at home. I find that really distracting. I just don't have the attention span to sit there and read. I like to have other things uh, going on. So my favorite places to read are the stationary bicycle and on a train.